And now, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to watch Fred Talks Fighting. This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Caleb Truex. So thank you very much. Come on, Caleb. Thanks for having me, man. So what's going, been going on with you, Caleb? Oh, not much, man. Just... Uh... Just relaxing and uh, spending time with my family after the after the fight and the long training camp uh, a couple weeks ago. So uh, when I'm whenever I'm uh, uh, training for a fight and and really serious in training, I I spend a little bit more time away from my family. So I always try to try to make up and and spend time with them for a week or two afterwards. So just been uh, relaxing ever since January thirtieth. It must be nice to finally be able to relax for a bit. And so let's just go into the fight you had with Caleb Plant two weeks ago for the RBF strap. Was this training camp any different because of the COVID restrictions? It was it was a little bit different, but uh, it didn't affect it um, at all, really. It was uh, we had we had some restrictions here in Minnesota, uh, but uh, thankfully my my boxing gym is is uh, semi private, so I was still able to have access to it uh, even while all the other gyms were were closed. But I have a key, so I can go there whenever I want. Um, and uh, Actually, the, the winter up until a couple of weeks ago, the winter was really mild here in, in Minnesota. So I was able to get out and do my road work. Um, normally, I wouldn't be able to. It's you know right now it's like minus minus 18 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it's uh, it's freezing cold right now. But uh, um, up until the fight, I was able to get outside and do my runs and get my road work in. So um, it, it wasn't affected uh, at all. And I had, I had a great, great training camp. It went really well. Yeah, the early morning runs must seem pretty freezing. And then going into the fight, what was your game plan, considering that Caleb is such a slick fighter? Uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to put pressure on him and work the body and just uh, make it an uncomfortable fight for for Plant. And uh, credit to him, he was able to use a jab to to keep me off him and, and to create distance. And uh, he was also able to use his good footwork to just to keep me on the outside more than I wanted to be. And then. Going into the fight, did it feel any different since there were no fans in attendance? Uh, it was a little bit weird, man. At first, you know, uh, I I, uh, I kind of had a laugh with my with my trainer in the corner uh, when, when I went into the ring and first entered the the ring. I always I always uh, uh, take a lap around the outside of the ring and raise my hand up and wave to the fans and I and just out of habit, you know, doing it thirty whatever times. I I did the same thing. And I got back to my corner and I uh, commented to my coach, like, I probably, probably shouldn't have done that. There ain't nobody to, to say hello to. And then he was like, come on, get focused, man. <laughs> it probably brought you back to your amateur days. And then going through the fight, what was going through? So when you got to like the sixth round, halfway through the fight, what was going through your head then? Uh, you know, I, I knew I was behind on points um, at that point. And, and I was still just trying to stick to the game plan and, and get close to him and, and land a right hand. You know, I was trying to, uh, go over the top of his low his low left hand. I was trying to land an overhand right, and um, like I said, credit to him, he was able to to keep me away with that jab and and use his his slick footwork and and uh, good elusiveness to to stay away from it for the most part. And then Caleb does have one of the best jabs at super middleweight. And then when the final bell went, round twelve was over. Did you think you'd done enough, or maybe not? No, you know I, I knew I was behind. My my corner knew I was behind, and. Um, they 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 or, uh, they communicated that to me during the 11th and 12th round. Like, hey man, you, you got to do something spectacular here. You're gonna need a, at least a knockdown uh, uh, and and most likely a knockout to to win this fight. So they were communicating that to me throughout the second half of the fight, and and uh, I knew what I needed to do. And, and once the bell rang, I knew that I had lost on on points. See, that's when you've got a good corner. They're telling you you need to get a knockout because you get lots of corners just saying, "Oh no, you're up, you're up by three rounds, you're up by four rounds." That's how you know you got you know you. That's how you know you've got a great corner. And then obviously it's only been a couple of weeks of the fight. Has it crossed your mind what you want to do next? Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm already back to training. I took a week off, and uh, this past Monday I, I got back to doing some swimming and swimming some laps in the pool to keep my cardio up and and doing some weight training. Uh, doing done a little bit of boxing. Uh, just shadow boxing and and uh, jump and rope and stuff like that. So I want to stay in shape. I want to be ready for whatever. I'm, I uh, I'm I'm not sure what opportunities will come my way, but uh, I want to be ready to jump on one if it's a good one. So hopefully I'll I'll get another fight that uh, that 
looks good on paper and and uh, is a decent money fight and and uh, we'll see. I, I'm I'm not sure what opportunities will come my way, like I said, but uh, I'll be ready when they are. And that's great. You're kind of injury free, so no Taylor Plan and a broken one of his hands. And it's great you're trained back straight away. And so since you're in the super middle, since you're in the super middleweight division, I'm gonna get your thoughts on a few upcoming fights. Canelo Alvarez, the money man, as everyone calls him, he's been linked to a fight with Billy Joe Saunders. Who do you think wins that one? Uh, I don't think I wouldn't pick anyone to beat Canelo right now. You know, I think he's uh, he's um, a man uh, possessed right now, man. He, he looks pretty damn good after beating Callum Smith uh, the way he did. I think Billy Joe Saunders is a slick boxer, a uh, good fighter. He hasn't really done much at super middleweight to to um, to warrant anyone picking him over over Canelo Alvarez. But uh, at the same time, uh, his style, you know, a slick boxing southpaw is what has given Canelo problems in the past. Uh, you know, when he fought Irislan de Lara, he, he had a lot of problems with Lara's style, uh, which is, I don't know if it's similar to Billy Joe Saunders, but it's, uh, you know, still the same, the same kind of uh, fighter, left-handed slick guy. Uh, so I, I think it could be a good fight, but I, I wouldn't pick, I wouldn't pick uh, Canelo to lose that. Do you think anyone beats Canelo? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, like I said, he he's uh, he's looking great right now. I think you know, the super middleweight division is is uh, there's lots of good fighters in the division, and with the size that we have, you know, all it takes is one shot to to hurt somebody and and uh, put somebody away. So there's always that that possibility. Um, I think David Benavidez, uh, with his size and his punching power, I think he he poses a threat to Canelo if, if he stays a super middleweight. I don't know. He he had a a follow up uh, uh, with weight on his last fight, so I'm not sure if he'll move up to light heavyweight or stay to at super middleweight. But um, I think he he presents a challenge. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I I think Canelo's gonna gonna reign for a while. <laughs> I think mean, he certainly will. I don't think he'll fight uh, David Benavides because he he lost his WBC belt. If he's still the belt, and Canelo will probably fight him. Anyway, I've only got one more question. So I know you're a very busy man. When you fought James DeGale the first time in the Copper Box Arena, you were like a 41, I think you were a 41 underdog. Did you ever bet on yourself? <laughs> I wish I would have, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, know I was that, that big of an underdog till the time I got over to London. And uh, in, in Minnesota, we can't do sports bets. You know, it's, it's illegal to, to do sports bets, so you can't just walk into a place and do it. And in London, I guess you guys can. I wish I would have walked in and put some money on myself. I would have made some more money, man. <laughs> No, you would have made a nice loan of money there. All right, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And where can people find you on social media at? Uh, you can find me on, on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Golden Caleb T. I love interacting with my fans and just uh, uh, BSing about boxing or fishing or any anything else. I like talking about beer. You, you probably can't drink beer yet, so uh, <laughs> we won't go there. But uh, um, nah, man, just I uh, love interacting with my fans. All right, Caleb, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Fred, man.